this video, I'm going to teach you how to write with light. I'm going to show you how to use the long shutter time in night photo mode to make some creative photos. Light painting is a fun way to get some cool photos and it's also a good way to understand photography just a bit more. I'm going to take you through the basics of light painting so that you have a good idea of how to do it and you can get out there and try some of these on your own. So let's check it out. For this photo, I left the shutter open for 30 seconds. So that means that any light that passed in front of the lens was going to leave an impression on the sensor. As you can see in the video clip to the top right, it's recording a bunch of frames a second. So you can't see the effect of the light painting. But because the shutter is left open on the photo, any light that passes there stays and it creates a really cool effect. If you step out of the photo, the darkness isn't going to erase anything. Whatever's written in light will stay there. So you can keep adding to it, which is pretty cool. When selecting your settings, you want to give yourself as much time as possible to do your light painting and add light into your photo. So go into night photo mode and select a shutter time of 30 seconds. Go into protune settings, change the white balance to 3000. That'll give you more bluish colors in the night. You can choose an ISO of 200 to get started. And then you can set the ISO minimum and maximum to the same ISO number. And the best thing to do then is to go test your ISO out to see which one will give you the best exposure. The ISO affects speed at which light is absorbed into your sensor. So a lower ISO, like 100 ISO, absorbs light more slowly. Whereas a higher ISO, like 800 ISO, absorbs it more quickly. So if you go through the different ISOs and test them out, you can see which ISO is absorbing light at the right pace for your 30 second interval. It's usually going to be 100 or 200 ISO if you're in a dark setting. The moon was pretty bright this night, so it was actually lighting up the scenery a lot. If it's a very dark night with no moon, you might need to go up to 400 ISO, but it's best to just test it out. You can also use night lapse mode if you want the next photo to begin as soon as the previous one finishes. Just set the interval to auto or continuous, and the next photo will begin as soon as the one before finishes. You want to select a really dark spot to do your light painting so that the light that you're creating is the only light affecting your sensor. Any light from even far off in the distance, even a passing airplane, will make an impression on your sensor. There are a number of tools you can use to create light. I used a lighter for this one, which is pretty nice to create like a yellow light. And it's also nice because you can turn it on and off to create words. You might want to get a lighter with a tip that's further away from the button because it can tend to get pretty hot if you're keeping it lit for a while. For this photo, I use a small laser light to write on the wall. Flashlight's got more of a broader beam and doesn't let you write so detailed. And for this one, I used a push LED light that had three lights on it, so it created little streaks. If you get really into light painting, you can use some of the more expensive tools like a pixel stick that can actually do programmed light patterns. But if you're just playing around with it, you can use any of the simple tools like a lighter, an LED flashlight, any sort of little flashlight or glow sticks, anything that's going to create light. As you're painting with light, you can kind of see how the light's going to affect your photo. I use a flashlight to fill in the little streak here in the middle of the photo, and also some blue light along the ground. To create the lighting for this photo, I swirled around a blue glow stick around the sand to fill in some blue light, and then I used an LED flashlight to draw the wave. You can just get creative with it and add light in a bunch of different ways, and it'll all add to your photo. If you're writing words with light, and you're facing the camera, you have to write the words backwards, so it's a little bit confusing. But it's best if you can use a flashlight that turns on and off easily. Or you can cover the flashlight with your hand to block the light in between letters. Or you can also use a lighter, which will turn on and off pretty easily. If you write letters without turning off the light source in between, the letters will run together. I didn't make any corrections to the photos that I showed you in this video, just so you could see what the settings look like straight out of the GoPro. But you'll probably want to make some changes to your photos after the fact. If you forgot to set the white balance in ProTune, you'll probably want to adjust the color temperature. And you might need to adjust exposure to make it brighter or darker. You might also want to adjust contrast to get more depth out of your photo. You also might want to crop and rotate your photo. It can be kind of hard to compose your shots at night. So you can rotate it to make the horizon straight if it's not. And you can also crop it. Thanks for watching. You can buy my book at Amazon. The links are in the description below. And have fun experimenting with your GoPro.